Hello, everybody. It's Rev here. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm going to ask you for some prayers. Um, because Shani, for the past four, it's like four or five days, I think, is she's been very bad. Um, really not even able to sit up now. So, that's pretty bad. So, could you pray for her health? Um, I would really appreciate that. Um, there's some stuff in need, so if you would like to help us out at our PayPal, just throw it in mind because it's the easiest at this point. Uh, it's at RevDude if you want to help us out. R-E-V-D-U-D-E. -E. So, I'm going to do a little Bible study for you. Um... My favorite gospel is the Gospel of John because it's, it's very spiritual. It's, it's, it's the most spiritual of all the gospels. And specifically, um, the first chapter in John is very interesting because the basic point of it is to let you know that Jesus Christ was the creator. Because uh, if you read John 1.1 1, 1 in parallel with Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, you're going to see that it's sort of similar in the way that, like, Moses wrote, like, okay, day one, da, 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 da. You kind of get the same vibe um, from John 1-1. One, one. And, and the basic point of it is to let you know, yeah, Jesus was the, the creator. So I, I hope you enjoy this. I When I first saw this as a Christian, it was very amazing because when it, I'm not going to go back and forth between Genesis and, and John. I did that years ago on my own channel. And it's very interesting when you do it. And it's, it's just a blessing if you're a believer, you know. So Gospel of John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And now they're, they're ta he's talking about John the Baptist, I believe in this. The sa not the Apostle John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light, that all men, men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. See, that's that that one always got me. He wasn't the, he's not the light, but he he was sent to bear witness of the light. He saw, yeah, he's talking about John the Baptist here. It, but it there's so God. I wish I could go back into my mind of how it worked with when when I used when I used to read scripture because I I had so much in my mind. Uh, esoteric stuff that's really neat um, but that's kind of rotted from my brain I believe uh, verse 9 that that was the true light which lighteth to every man that cometh into the world that's you know the spirit he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not now, that's Jesus <laughs> He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he, he uh, to them he, he power. What the flip? I'm sorry, guys. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word for Word is Logos, and it, you do a word study on that word. It's very interesting. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spoke, spake. He cometh after me, is preferred before me, for he was before me. So John the Baptist is older than Jesus, right? 
but he's saying that Jesus was before him. Okay, that that's giving you a little bit of an idea of who you're dealing with here. You're dealing with the Creator in the flesh. And and let we should talk about avatars for a second. Okay, this is sort of esoteric Christianity stuff, but it makes you understand who Jesus was better. Okay, because when people talk about the Trinity. It can get uncomfortable pretty quick for some people because they don't, I'm not going to say they don't fully understand it, but I think most Christians have a problem fully understanding the Trinity. Most Christians. Esoteric Christians, they get it. But, you know, don't, don't be scared by the Trinity, a three-in-one thing. It's not, it's, it's multiple manifestations of God, in, but it's one, it's the same entity. Okay? It's like you talking on a phone it's still you. If you go on the internet and talk, it's still you talking, right? But it, you're behind an avatar of some kind on the internet. It, God chose the method of coming in the form of man to tell us what the deal is and, and how things are going to be and, and actually made the sacrifice that had to be made to make redemption for the creation from the fall of man in Genesis 3. So that's a bit, that's really a big verse there, okay? Um, that he was before John, because he's, tell, he's telling you that he was pre-incarnate. And of his fullness have we all received and the grace for, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, yes. And Jesus says, don't think I came to destroy the law. I, I came to fulfill it. So, you know what I mean? People like to just throw the law under the bus, but there, there was a reason for it. No man, hath, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, hath, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? This is, this is the Pharisees' question in John. Um, verse 20, And he confessed and denied it not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What, the, what then? Art thou Elias? That's Elijah. And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And, and he answered, no. Then said, I think that's Enoch. <laughs> when they say that prophet, they mean Enoch. Then said they unto him, who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that, that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And that's interesting, he quotes Isaiah, that's actually, wait a minute, no, I, that's different, okay, Elias, Isaiah, yeah, that's Isaiah, I'm sorry. The one before is Elijah, and the second one is Isaiah. And, and uh, they that which were sent of the Pharisees, and they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptize, why baptize, baptize thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom you, you know not. He it is, who's, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latched I am not worthy to unloose. These are the things done in uh, Beth, Bethabara beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. This is he whom I, I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. 31. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I, have, I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize him with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he that which baptizes by, with the Holy Ghost. 
So once this person comes around, John would know it by the Spirit because he'd see the anointing stay on the person. And that was the Messiah. He understood that, that was going to be the Messiah. And I saw and bear record that uh, this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood, two of his disciples, uh, and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? That's the first words of Jesus in red. That's, that's the red words, man. What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is, uh, which is to say being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt. Man, you see some revelation uh, type writing there. You can see it's, you know, John the Apostle writing it. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him uh, that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak, speak sorry, and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpret, interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is in per, by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus uh, would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip uh, was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found of whom Moses and the law and the prophets and, uh, did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael uh, said unto him, come, come there any good thing out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto, saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and, and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, uh, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before, before that Philip called thee, uh, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under a fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto, unto you, Hereafter you, sh you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and de descending upon the Son of Man. And that's the ascension. So that's, that's the Gospel of John chapter 1. But it's really like the beginning of John there, that that beginning is probably one of my favorite things in the Bible because it's really giving you confirmation and Jesus does himself like he says to the disciples uh, if you've seen me you've seen the father so he's God in the flesh okay and and it's important for you to understand in the flesh okay the I, I am one of those Christians that believe that when God said, let there be light, it came out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. He was pre-incarnate with the Father, okay, waiting for his time. Um, the kind, Look up the word avatar, A-V-A-T-A-R, you know, it's the, the movie. Um, it's, I'm not telling you the movie is what I'm talking about, it's not, okay. But the actual concept of avatars, it comes mainly from Hinduism. Okay, I'm not going to go into stuff like that because I know Christians get are like, oh my God, you're going New Age. No, that's that's not what I'm doing. But you do have to understand that there are, are also mysteries in the Bible. Okay, because Paul really talks about that stuff, and and he tries to give you an idea what he's talking about, but it's it's spirit knowledge, and it's very hard to discern. By just your mind. In fact, I think it's impossible to discern by just your mind. You need to have the Holy Spirit, and you need you need you need to have that open doorway to God uh, for your mind to comprehend these things. But but Paul talks about 
superposition. Okay, we're, we're you could go into quantum physics and stuff, but he talks about how in some mystical way that we really can't understand, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ right now. As a believer, you, I got chills. Right now, as you're laying down or sitting up or speaking or just vegetating, looking at the wall, okay? If you're a Christian, you are seated with Jesus right now in heaven. You're there. Now meditate, maybe you can see it, maybe. Okay, serious meditation, uh, prayer, supplication, fasting, you might be able to see it. Um, and also the veil is getting very much thinner. So you're going to be able to see spiritual things a lot more as time goes by because that veil is coming down. But the concept of an avatar is from, it's, it's mainly Hinduism, but just imagine, I, like, it's, I, the easiest thing that I could say to you is, like, talk, you're talking on a phone to talk to, to somebody, that's one way you can talk to people. You go outside, you're walking down the road, and you see somebody, and they pass you, and you say, hey, what's up? That's another way to communicate with people, okay? But it's always you. It's, it's, it's not some other entity. It's, it's you. God the Father chose a vessel of a human being to come here and communicate the message, which is love. That's it. There's no other prerequisites to being a Christian. Uh, I, okay, if you have love in your heart, that's a starting point. You need to love God and love your, your fellow man. That's it. If you got that in your heart. Believing in Jesus is the next step, and you need to get there. I really pray to, pray to him that you do get there. But for Christians that struggle with the idea of sort of new agey feeling beliefs like this, it's not weird, okay? It's really not. And it's in the scripture if you, if you can tease it out. Now, people love to debate the oneness. There's oneness doctrine, which I don't believe in. Uh, there's the Trinity, which is, I think, the closest to the truth. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And people say that's three gods, but it's not. Because it's not three different yous if you're talking, okay? If you're talking to people through the computer, the phone, or in real life, it's still you. It's three different methods of communication, but it's still you. So it's not multiple gods. You get it? Yeah, I, I'm a Trinitarian. I would call myself, I, I'm pretty sure. There might be some doctrines that Catholics came up with that I wouldn't agree with that's in Trinitarianism, but I'm not going to get into that because I haven't even really looked into that stuff at, at great length. I haven't dug into catechisms and stuff. Maybe that's my next... Maybe that's my next spiritual journey. We'll be going through catechisms and see what the popes have said. And, you know, all of the, the Catholic Church's teachings. But uh, just, it would be interesting to know them. Um, but I hope this blessed you. Don't, don't feel weird about saying that Jesus is the creator because he literally said it. He, he said, if you're seeing me, you're seeing dad. You see me, you see the father. So he is the father in the flesh. He's blessed and I can't wait to see him. God bless you guys. I really hope this bless you. Uh, if you'd like to help us, my PayPal is at RevDude, R-E-V-D-U-D-E. If you can help us out, it would be greatly appreciated because I do need some stuff for the house and other things. So, God bless you. Take care.